of Architecture Universitas Plus Maret, supported by the Students Association Vastovidya. My name is Ovita Pruani, and I will be your host in this webinar. Today, I am very delighted to welcome our guest, Assistant Professor Xiaoyu Wang from the National Taipei University of Technology, Taiwan, to share her research with us with an interesting topic on multi-scala and multi-scaling cities, a critical reading on contemporary globalized urbanism. This webinar will be recorded and streamed on YouTube. If you have any questions for our speaker today, please use the chat function on both platforms and I will be filtering and passing them on to the speaker. Please be kind to include your name and affiliation and uh, perhaps your location. Uh, along with your questions in the chat box. Also, please do not forget to fill the attendance form to be posted later in the chat box to have your free e-certificate. Uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce you all to our speaker today. Uh, Dr. Xiao Yu Huang holds a PhD in architecture from the University of Edinburgh, the UK, and both an MA in architecture and critical theory from the University of Nottingham, UK, as well as an MR professional degree in architecture from Tamkang University. After her PhD, she worked at the uh, postdoctoral fellow at the Bartlett University College London. So this is, I think it's very important milestone for her. She is currently an assistant professor in architecture at the National Taipei University of Technology. Her current research examines the complex links between urban informality, socio-urban infrastructure and public space in a particular context of globalized cities in East Asia. The concept of multiscalar methodology is a central approach to her design and research work. She is recently involved in a project that investigates the transformation of contemporary church architecture in Taiwan with a focus on questions of the conventional principles of forming sacred space and of its new public service. So uh, we will have a very interesting presentation from our guest speaker today. Please join me in welcoming her. And let me hand it to our speaker, uh, Dr. Shao Yuwang. Thank you very much, please. Hello, um, can you hear me everybody? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, um, good morning, everyone. And uh, it's my pleasure uh, to share my research project with you all. And first of all, I very thank you to Dr. Ofita Purani, who is my dearest colleague when we were in Edinburgh and asked me to join uh, this online kind of, uh, I would say a seminar to share my uh, interest and hope we will have a very good um, uh, exchange ideas and can um, inspire each other no matter in the theoretical research work or even for the architecture or another design studio. Okay, let me share my phone. Okay, uh, could you see the full screen of the presentation? Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, right. Uh, so uh, today, uh, my topic is multiscalar and uh, multiscaling cities, a critical reading on contemporary uh, globalized urbanism. Sorry, I'm... just wait me a second. I changed. Um... Okay, yeah. Okay, right. Okay, so before going to the content, uh, I will introduce myself a little bit. Although the uh, Ofita has already introduced me uh, already, because uh, I think it's quite interesting uh, and important to me to share you my uh, training and professional background. So you can uh, see the framework, how they uh, dev uh, I will be develop my knowledge and my interest in toward the topic today. So I am trained as an architect and architecture scholar in Taiwan. I finished two master degree, 
The first one is professional degree with special focus on architecture and urban theory, as you can see, uh, is in the Changkang University. The second one I'm going to study in the UK. Uh, it's about architecture and the critical theory and awarded from the University of Nottingham. And I hold my uh, PhD degree in architecture and the University of Edinburgh and continue my postdoctoral training in the Butler School of Architecture UCL. And this is very quite a crucial stage to uh, me to develop my uh, research interest in and direction, which will help me to uh, set up my uh, framework for the design studio and uh, uh, my research project. Okay, uh, all this experience equip me with a broad knowledge, uh, training from urban issues, cultural studies, even to human geography, especially based on my research in uh, PhD thesis. But architecture is still and uh, is the foundation of my work. Now I uh, teach in Department of Architecture at the National Taipei University of Technology. And uh, this is our uh, uh, department. And uh, this building is a design school. And I would say this is the, one of the oldest architectural department in Taiwan. So uh, it's my honor to teach this uh, in this department with long-term hi uh, history to train architects and the architecture scholar. Uh, for the Taiwan, uh, for uh, even for the all over the world. Okay. Uh, okay. So today, I believe most of uh, our audience uh, might be from the architectural discipline or related background. So this turn scale, I believe, is quite familiar with most of you. But today, uh, I will give some kind of a uh, challenge or. Uh, chance to rethink this turn and our discipline and even the dis uh, cross discipline knowledge to re understand or revisit uh, this uh, work, which we might be very uh, familiar and even take for granted for a long time. But not just for this uh, now scale. But also today, I will going to uh, to discover and explore another similar um, term is a scalar and the scaling. So the scale for uh, architecture scholar or architect is not just a noun, but it's all the, uh, but also a verb and the adjective to be a, an enabling tool to do the measurement and the conceptual work uh, in special discipline. So I believe these three words will come uh, will repeatedly uh, uh, show in our today's uh, talk and uh, topic. Okay. So uh, I will argue multi-scalar methodology is a strategy and a conceptual instrument to depict social spatial complexity in contemporary city, especially in East Asia. Uh, I'll just give the statement first and we will uh, generally uh, step by step to um, show you why the multi-scalar method is, in, uh, is quite crucial and as an alternative way to approach our contemporary city and its condition. Okay. Sorry. So this research condition actually is based on the phenomena of globalization. And it stimulates a complex and ambiguous typolo uh, typology uh, for architecture design practice and its supporting system, for example, infrastructure, uh, since the, uh, the mid of 20th century and is accelerated, increasingly accelerated uh, at the end of 20th century. So the globalized process has been facilitated by two major things, the development of advanced technology and affordable mobility and the traveling demands. 
So it accelerates various unprecedented conditions, such as here, the flows and mobility of capital is another capital, the uh, capacity to uh, move freely and uh, a different kind of weight uh, rather than just a physical, but kind of uh, after floor and transaction floor to cross different kind of boundary and not absolute of time and space uh, according to our media and the technology. Uh, informer economy and the speciality has happened more increasingly in our society and in our urban life. And city become unbounded, partially connected. And uh, so the geographical term, uh, geographical boundary and determination has been taken by special network of city rather than just a physical boundary uh, at all. So new identification of city territories has occurred and the territorialization and the re-territorialization process has continuously to reshape our city and uh, our uh, urban life. So the series of shifting vocabulary or contemporary urban formation uh, occurred. So those terms list on your right hand side as a uh, different kind of uh, discipline scholar try to understand this condition and situation. So from the very earlier, the met metropolis, uh, megapolis and megacity, metacity and um, post-metropolis and even to the world and global city and network city and so on. So those all things want to un uh, scholars or practitioners want to understand how the, this kind of increasing changes of uh, the urban situation and our understanding of cities. So this is my research uh, condition. Why scale, uh, scale become an important uh, method to understand this situation? The process of urbanization in the global city reading will increasingly uh, hinge upon the discontinuous dynamics and uneven trajectories of urbanization. So it's partially and fragmentally uh, uh, expression of urbanization. To recognize the globalization process, uh, operate on diverse geographical social levels and involve various actors from individual to the uh, sub uh, supranational institution. So the global is a multi-scalar cooperation. So therefore, uh, many scholar, especially from the ge uh, geography and urban study, try to uh, theor um, not just uh, use a new term, also arise some question about this new situation. So for example, here, the uh, Neil Brenner is a professor of urban theory at Harvard GSD Design School, proposed a shift from the urban question, uh, drawing from the Manuel Castell in 1997, to the scale question, uh, drawing from or based on the argument by the Harry Lefebvre in 1976. And it offers a new window to discuss the matter of skill from a materialist uh, perspective. So uh, you can see the first art uh, the article in 2000, Neil Brenner writes a question, the urban question as a skill question. And following, following Andy uh, Marifo, as an art, urban theorist and educator. He also uh, published uh, a book called The New Urban Caution, which uh, tried to reflect on those issues in our urban life. And it's in the 2014. And uh, Neil Brennan just stopped there to uh, question the new urban situation but in his latest publication in 2019. Uh, it's a 
He called it a new urban spaces, urban theory and the skill question. Okay. So then, especially in the urban study, you can see uh, Professor Neil Brunner, contempor uh, contemporary urban condition can be regarded as a rescaling process for theorizing capitalist urbanization. So remember here, uh, uh, this scholar tried to uh, use this idea of scale as a tool to understanding the capitalist and the materialist urbanization. Okay, he proposed that the urban question today is getting close to what uh, Lefebvre called the skill question and existing uh, Lefebvre's approach to social spatial theory in order to conceptualize the transformed form of the urban question into the contemporary world. The capacity to jump scales is the key for transforming the geographical framework and lead to a new scalar configuration that differentiate and contain the social relationship in power geometries. But the geometries they call is not the uh, architecture geometry they will understand. So it just gave you some idea, uh, scholar in urban study and uh, human geographer also use this term in the very, um, actually is, uh, is earlier than 2000, uh, 2000 is around the uh, to, uh, 19, uh, 18, uh, 1997 has already developed this idea and the question about scale and the urban uh, question. Then we will try to ask and want to ask, how can architecture engage in such debates and conditions? Rather just become an outsider to see uh, the urban geographer or the uh, human geographer to use this term to question this new condition in our life. So here, skill. Why skill matters uh, in the architecture discipline? It is not uh, just a measuring tool, it's also a conceptual method. So uh, here I list two or uh, three things. The first thing is as Neil Brenner called the jump skills. But here is a, we call it the jumping skills. We quite familiar with the things. We, when we do the design project, we jump different kinds of skills to check the project itself. So from this perspective, it's a measuring, uh, measuring or confirming tool to make sure the project, no matter the space or the different kind of details uh, is make sure on the different kind of physical and the conceptual uh, guideline you want to present to, uh, present to the, uh, the user. But also the multi-skill. Multi Here, the jumping skill means the scale is fixed, so we can jump different kind of scale, one to 50, one to 100, this thing. But multi-scale more re, uh, refers to the different kind of scalar, different kind of scales coexist together. So it's a multi-scale things happen at the same time. Okay, so also uh, scale is a cross-disciplinary language shared uh, among us related special field. For example, uh, as a urban studies and uh, geography, they also use this idea to depict the whole, the world and the surroundings. Okay. And as a sense of skill inherently residing in architectural discipline, it can be tracked back to the tradition of humanities in the sense of relating to human society and to the human form, which, uh, which uh, refer to the proportional relationship of the building to its part. Okay, so from this scholar, a section of uh, stairs, so you can see actually it referred to the 
the idea and the possibility of jumping different kind of skill. So each skill has its uh, order and its position. And but from the architecture, uh, uh, architecture discipline and the profession, we can jump different kind of skill to to make it as a measurement tool. But not just for a one project, it's a cross, uh, as, we, as I just mentioned, we can jump in different kinds of skill rather than just in a one project. So for example, type of landscape, uh, Adorosi, a just picture uh, a teapot set on his table, but actually it's, re, uh, it's formed and it's a different kind of skill can refer to the cathedral and also as a, a sea house. So it start to uh, show the architects and architectural profession have its, uh, its a capacity and how to use and understanding uh, skill as a verb and also a noun to use for the understanding different objects, the relationship between different kinds of objects. So I argue the concept scale and its diverse nature are both an enabling matter and the theoretical point of departure for further engagement in the study. So they may be a good departure for this, uh, uh, for architecture discipline to engage such a conditional, a uh, new conditional urban situation uh, debate. Another fam uh, famous uh, quote is from the spoon to the city. This is another example that can show you the architect has a, a different kind of capacity, uh, different from the geographer or the uh, uh, scholar in urban studies, because we can design or use scale as a tool to design object or understanding the object from the spoon to the city. So uh, for us, it's, diff it's not the different things. We just change different kind of skill to understanding the relation relationship. The architect intend to design both buildings and their contents. There's another, uh, probably the premise for their architect. Uh, they can use skill, uh, co uh, can understand skill coexisting e at the same time and also jumping different kind of skill at the same time. So Charles Ames also quote, uh, quote, so I can design a piece of architecture that you can hold in your hand, but uh, it's hard to understand or try to think what is this really means by the geographer or urban, uh, the scholar in urban uh, studies, because how can you make an architecture become less small in your hand? But it's not just uh, about the size. So it shows a difference about this between the size and the scale. Okay. So this, uh, we are going to show some uh, traditional idea uh, about the scale and architecture. So this is quite uh, familiar with you to you guys, and it's quite also iconic uh, photos and tools to think about the scale uh, in architectural discipline. So we can dress a building and also use a uh, human body become the uh, standard to show the building uh, is the, the size of building itself. So this is a scale of figure the measurement. Another is to represent, to use a uh, different kind of scale to represent the building on the human body. So going to the scale and architectural tradition, I thought I think um, most of our audience quite familiar with all their things, but I just try to uh, give some 
uh, idea why they still really matter and uh, what's the problem uh, with the conceptual issue of skill in our contemporary situation in our dis uh, in our discipline. So uh, the skill in architecture tradition uh, refer to several things, body itself, and aesthetic standards, special order arrangement, proportion, elements, cosmos, city, and architecture. Okay, so architecture skill is not just a system or even refer to body one object, but it's a relational, relational composition and also the index uh, for a person to depict the surrounding and also to the world. Okay, so this is a comparison of uh, orders in the temple uh, space, according to the virtuous with actual uh, example. And it is from the human body as a uh, set up the order to create the column. But, and also it's not just a, a human body, it's just not a standard for the skill. The meaning of skill comes from three characteristic in architecture, the center relationship and the comparison. It is a relative size in relation to something else, which might be physical or an idea. So it's clear shows physical and the idea uh, relationship in architecture discipline is a nature of we understand the skill and how to use the skill. Body, building, and city are all representational of each other. So uh, you can see on the photo on your left hand side, uh, expression of the relation between human body and the cathedral, and also the human body relationship between human body and the city itself. So it's more like a system. Human body is a core of uh, skill in architecture discipline. And each order follows the same hierarchical plan with head, body, limbs, and so on. So human body set up an uh, arrangement and the proportion of those different kind of relationships. And there are multiple skills revealed in such a projection. The human body is the index of surroundings in the world. Okay. So on your right hand side, the casino that shows the toe is another uh, rendering of total man and its surrounding and the words. So human body is still in the center. A total man express a relationship between human beings and their environmental needs in a nasty concept drawing. So that's quite important to give you ideas from a very earlier time. We think about the skill is in the nasty concept, whereas Leonardo's Vitruvian man in is position in the center. Okay. Not just for uh, the proportion and the environment, the imagination, perception, and recognition. In terms of skill, uh, perception large and small is about size and also the experience near and far, they coexist. And as a, a architecture scholar or a practitioner, we can uh, image and perceive this size and distance, and distance use the concept of skill. So it composes a part of the beauty of life and to depict uh, it's a part of the whole. Okay, so this drawing rendered by an architect, uh, Tim uh, Makeover, he shows the skill on inner and outer, near and far, um, drawing from or inspired from the Le Corbusier and the Vitruvian man because uh, you can see the cathedral, the city is still here, the house here is surrounding, 
and still a uh, human body still in the very center and uh, the starting point to all the things. And of course, we, we still need to mention the, the Corbusier's uh, modular man, which considers the most notable descendant of the virtual figures and Leonardo's uh, ratio of virtual man. It's all about the geometry and the proportion. Okay. Okay, so it's a uh, general idea how the uh, skill and how what's the nature in architectural discipline. The human body is a key. Okay, but when we talk about the architectural skill and the discipline, uh, we take this all for granted when we are uh, learn architecture in academia. But actually, it's not many publication or books talk about architectural skill. So in architectural discourse, uh, in 19, uh, 1966, the Hathi Likader actually published this book, try to question of scale manifest the architecture issue in every generation. So he gave a review how, uh, what's the foundation of architectural scale according to the historical uh, development and architecture history, but also question, but also rise why uh, scale is matter because it becomes a uh, statement to reflect uh, different kind of issues in every generations. Okay, for example, in the modernism or the uh, um, in the modernism the out of human skill or to larger size, maybe, uh, or more on human skill will be the issue need to rethink and reflect in that generation. But you can see almost 10, almost 10 years later, another book then published is uh, by Charles Moore and uh, uh, Jura Allen. Um, it's called body memory and architecture, and another one is uh, uh, dimensions. But it's not directly or only focused on the idea of skill in architecture, but try to how to uh, show the importances and how to use our uh, skill in our discipline, and also revisit the idea of skill in architectural education and pedagogy. But you can see still before the 1980s. Okay, so around the 19, 1985, Frank Og re reviewing the definition of scale since, uh, since 1959 to 1979. So you can see this kind of figure. Actually, there's no uh, precise or uh, absolute definition of what is skill, but more agreement, common agreement is, it's about the comparison and related to human size. Okay, so human body still uh, is recognized as a key things and uh, key elements or key components of idea of skill in architecture. But now is something challenge this idea. Why? Challenge things the rise of post uh, modernism, body in pen. When the core value or the key things of the idea of uh, idea of skill in architecture uh, be shift or be challenged, that uh, the idea of skill has been vibrate. So redefining of a body uh, after uh, after 1980s, uh, literary works and medical evidence and new science and philosophical inquiry, for example, like uh, existential listen, also challenge the the body itself. Is a uh, one body or is a conjunction one or is it there's a two body or what is a real body size should be look like? Okay, so all these things start to challenge or question uh, our 
physical body and our existence. Okay. So in terms of architecture, body in pain, the haunting absence of the body. So uh, a series and groups of architects uh, try to argue and try to um, explore this absence of the body in post-modernism uh, uh, era and try to use their work to re-understand if human body is not the center or that, the bo human body is absent, how their work can be. So they try to uh, give another idea or understanding of project itself out of the uh, this kind of body uh, redefinition. So it just from the Anthony Vedler and uh, uh, Cook Campbell and also Bernard Trumi to the Renku House and not all of their work to try to find uh, this missing or absent of body, but they try to rethink how when this human body is not a center, what, how can we to reflect this situation in their individual work and also to the public work. The more uh, exaggerate uh, after 1990s. So the body, when we uh, have a more uh, high tech uh, advanced technology, so we can speed up and have a larger uh, quantitative uh, production, body has been also challenged what kind of speed and movement we can have as a as a one individual body or as a place or space for human body is still really the center of this uh, architectural work. So it has been challenged a lot uh, since 1919. So uh, Renku House in 1998, and his quite famous uh, publication question shows the SMLXL will be the issue in this book. And especially in one chapter, bigness or the problem of large. Actually, he pointed out the absence of the theory of bigness, a scalar issue actually implies that arch architecture has lots the ability to create new communication with human body building and its built environment at the time. Okay. So I think it's uh, good to uh, take hit Linkader to argue every generation have their uh, scalar issue or question of scale can represent the, gener uh, the issue in the generation. So for Renku House, the absence of a uh, theory of bigness is a problem and is a scholar, a scholar problem. And ultimate architecture, a new programmation for architectural practice, which is a assemblage of diverse professions and function work at the same time will uh, increase or accelerate this problem and issue to trigger uh, the scholar in architecture or the uh, professional practitioner need to rethink. We haven't touched or, or we haven't developed a new concept of idea to reflect the new situation. The absence of the theory of bigness is an issue here. And, but it also talk about that actually is a dilemma in architectural discipline. This analysis of materiality, architecture itself is architectural nature, but after impact of global flaws is a uh, after flaws. So how do we balance or to use a materiality to reflect this uh, power and uh, out of scale uh, transition force? That's an issue for the contemporary uh, practitioner to face the urban condition and urban scale. The bigness will be a dialogue between the urbanism and architecture. So here, uh, this publication in 1997, 
the title shows the scale. And also in the 2014, uh, Team Makeover also give a, a beautiful book called Touch the City's Thought on Urban Scale, but actually he's from the architect's uh, perspective to understand the city from the urban scale. So they try to demonstrate and rethink what is a scale and, uh, and its size and what is age and movement of scale in architecture can help to understand and engage, re-engage this kind of complicated uh, professional project in the situation. And also here, that's quite interesting. In 2011, the, uh, uh, the professor in geography, Andrew Harrow, uh, published a book called Scale. So here, and geography scale is a way to image the world as it's more about level and the territory. But in 2012, uh, 2012 uh, it's a collection uh, following by the conference called Scale in Architecture. So I, I think really, it's really interesting to, to compare those two disciplines to understand and to discuss the idea of scale. Uh, as a different kind of tools to understand or theorize our contemporary situation. So in architecture scale as a standard for architectural design and analysis, it is about space and perception. But this is quite interesting. Uh, on your left-hand side is a publication in ge geographical discipline. They use there the architecture element as a uh, cover photo. But this, on your right-hand side is a uh, public, uh, publication from the architectural discipline. They use a landscape or even the city or remote uh, uh, landscape as a photo uh, cover photo to show the idea of scale. So I think it's uh, show the uh, various ambitious or diverse conversation between those disciplines who really concerned about the idea of scale. Okay, but here's the, the question. Questions of scale, conventional idea of scale, as we uh, introduce and re revisit is again, conventional idea of scale is architecture and geographical discipline, which refer to understand of fixed scalar levels in hierarchical nasty logic is actually is questionable. Okay, so if you see the conceptual model of scale, conventional idea about no matter in the geography or architecture, uh, they must uh, set up the framework more like that. It is nasty and hierarchical order of scale. It's more like a conceptual model of a Russia though, as a body in the center and extended to the urban region, national, global. And, okay. And, or is a network inspired metaphors of scale model, but it's still set up in the hierarchy. The global nation urban body is still up and down. Even for the spider website, they still have the center of this. But uh, the hypothesis of my research actually is try to argue the dynamic coexistence of different kinds of bigness and smallness in contemporary city uh, can be and should be understood by examining the emergence of so social special practice in and through urban infrastructure and also architecture, especially those that support the function of newly developed globalized center within, within the city itself. But that means if we use this uh, nothing hierarchical order of skill, no matter for the measuring or for their uh, conceptual tool, it's quite, uh, it's quite um, inadequate to reveal subtle and something actually use this kind of six, uh, system and structure to can depict. So the argument for the research, scale is a critical approach to complex urban dynam uh, dynamics. 
The multi-scale method is helpful to depict dynamically emerging social spatial conditions in globalized urban areas. The significance of scale in architecture is about the comparison system. So it's not actually just fixed. Uh, remember, we talk about the jumping scale and the coexistence of different kind of multiple scale. And we can handle it and deal with it and understand at the same time as the architects or architectural profession. The characteristic enable the power of architectural skill in a range of various physical size in some orders and at the same time. So uh, my research aims to taste the multi-scale methodology as an alternative approach to explore the emerging social spatial dynamics or complex uh, communities in a particular urban regeneration area in East Asia city, uh, for example, is Taipei. So this uh, new di relational diagram is tried to not just break up, but is a re-render about the hierarchy and nasty uh, scalar uh, convention into a more dynamic uh, relationship between each other. Okay, that which give you some Okay, so as Saskia as I mentioned, many of the global scale dynamics actually are partly embodied in uh, subnational sites and move across different scale practice and organization forms. Um, cross boundary infrastructure promotes constantly the center and the recenter the cartography of post metropolitan cityscape and the global web. So, uh, quote. Uh, and uh, state by Stephen Grant. So different kind of bigness and smallness coexist and the dynamic co-present in the global urban center. That is the argument and just happened in our uh, contemporary, especially in the East Asia context. So why this multi-scalar multi uh, methodology is uh, useful to understand those things. So. I will give you uh, two uh, examples how I use this idea of multi-scalar methodology and to show you how they can reveal something is quite subtle and actually quite complicated coexist at the same time and we understand our city rather just the global big and small or local, but actually there is a dynamic moving feel uh, uh, happening in our life. So uh, this, two pro uh, this two project and two tales is not uh, intended to be a comparison project and it be, has been conducted uh, individually, but the London project is uh, the methodology of London projects based on uh, my PhD research uh, work, which, uh, which was uh, conducted and be supported by the empirical work in Thai patient planning industry. So we just try to re-understand these things. It's not just size, and not just a uh, scale. So it's rather than just big, local, small, and global. And it's a conventional idea to uh, define a city as a global city and what kind of condition and phenomena is called global. But here we try to use a multiple accumulation method to show the, the different content of each of cases. So there are three kind of uh, aspects we are focused on to in each of cases. It's the infrastructure or say urban fabric, actual participator and the special practice. So those two cases, why those two area? So this map is show you uh, how, uh, what's the location of these two district or area uh, in the in those cities. So on your left hand side is the Taipei city metro map. 
the gray uh, blocks is a uh, old city center. The red one is a uh, stringing planning district, is a new uh, planning area. And on your right hand side is a uh, London uh, metro map. The gray one is more, I would say, more like a London quiet center. I choose the Westminster and the King's Cross as a transportation and the political center. The structure is on the uh, the area of travel is on the red area. And those two area, I would say comparatively new, I would say because they are uh, start to plan it and uh, develop around 1980. So that's a crucial time for the uh, process of globalization and how city are going to sprawling or extended. So in the case in type, Taipei, I try to find five practices. And each of practice, you won't say you uh, you won't say it's uh, architectural or uh, landscape or field. So we call it a social special practice. So each of this uh, have a special uh, and the significant role in this area, and we. We try to use a different kind of uh, scale, a vision, a visual work of different kind of scale. So you will have a map and uh, diagram and photos. And those photos shows a uh, different angle to approach the social special practice. Okay. Um, this is a, uh, I call the alternative uh, multiscalar method and to show the uh, idea of accumulation of different kind of method to show each of uh, special social special practice to give a uh, idea, each of practice might uh, suitable or adapt for particular method but some will be not suitable for or appropriate to some method uh, to demonstrate to or collect the empirical data. Okay, so in my pro uh, this kind of idea of accumulation uh, of different kind of method is maybe provide an interdependent approach to exploring different social special practices. They co-present multi-scale and involving special temporary networks in the global urban project. Okay, the amount of data collected by the same method was uneven and varied in each of the practice. So this multi-method not only operate on the side of the social special practice as a anthropogeographical research conventionally does, but more importantly were practiced outside the geographical site and with subjects who were not present at the same time. Okay, so this kind of, uh, this method and uh, idea of accumulation will be uh, revisited and re examined in the London Shuffle project. So I will give this four special, uh, five social special practice, a conventional idea, it's a uh, character of in under the conventional idea of scale. So for example, Taipei 101 building will be located in the global uh, area, but actually after this uh, empirical data collection, uh, what we will find actually is make content or support, highly supported by local and small infrastructure system and it's not physically big, but if we take into uh, the whole district area, uh, it's a support. It's just one point of transportation system as a uh, hub for this whole area. So not just a, the tallest building at that time as our architectural work. Okay, so this is this is multi. Uh, uh, methodology that conclude by a moving field diagram 
to show actually there's a patchy relationship between others. So it's not a just a fixed skill, a fixed skill to represent each of work. So these five uh, cases will use different uh, after the collection of empirical data. We'll show different kind of photos and uh, it, and show its hidden system to reveal its globe probably the global or bigness uh, character in its own. So this is a multi, a multi uh, system and this is a Taipei 101 building and um, it's highly supported by the cleaning uh, maintenance uh, workers to make this all the things functional well and happened. And finally, we will re Structuring Xing Yi planning district by multi scalar and the dimensional infrastructure rendering uh, use um, mapping to show his diversity involving different groups or actors and uh, different level and scale infrastructure to each cases. Okay. So uh, for the uh, London structural cases, we I take only four uh, examples here. It's a region, local, global city, and each of this similar like uh, the empirical work in Taipei. It, it's not easy to call it as architecture because some of them is a phenomena or some uh, uh, situation in this uh, special area. But this area is quite famous and iconic because there's uh, Olympic Park here. So for the global, I focus on lo uh, London was a shuffle city. It's a transportation area and shopping mall. And the city is a carbon, uh, carpenter estate and its community. And um, local is a uh, fish island. Uh, Honeywick is uh, the highest density of our studio in the European. And the region is a river lee and the two ways of use water. Is a sport aquatic center and uh, live on the boat. So this is uh, the development, historical development of Stratford area. Okay, so we re render uh, is different kind use uh, map is a large scale uh, method to depict four uh, cases uh, or four social special practice, but also use different uh, method, visual methods. For example, here is a photo and sometimes I use a video to capture like, to capture uh, their local or smallness uh, character and its own. So actually on your top, uh, top right hand side, this is in the West Field uh, shopping more. It's a more similar argument like in the type of one one building. It's supported by uh, maintenance worker to make this happen. And also on your left hand, top left hand side, uh, it's uh, how they use uh, uh, water to live on there or the aquatic uh, center for the Olympic or international gym. Okay, so again, Use a uh, idea of accumulation for the data collection uh, to represent these four cases. So those multi-scalar social special practice as a dynamic and emergent forms embody the way of, of which people do sometimes reflect on their social and the material condition shape their life and their surroundings. So uh, social urban infrastructure, I would say social um, special practice mostly refers to the architecture and the infrastructure, reveal and embody diverse forces in the city, especially through informal social special practice, which are normally uh, subtle and the peripheral to be seen. So use this, uh, this multi-scalar approach might be appropriate to reveal those subtle complex systems actually uh, importantly significantly support this idea and its content and its function. So to apply or extend this multi-scalar 
uh, methodology, multi-scaling city. Uh, here we will uh, will find the new relationship to re-understanding the infrastructure and architecture itself. And also it refers to the urban form and urban scale. So here is more recent uh, uh, research uh, uh, direction is revisit infrastructure to apply this multi-scalar uh, method and approach to see the infrastructure is from the uh, engineering facility, physical facility to the social network facility. But, and it's also bring out as um, very porosity in nature. It's multiple large scale for the nature of infrastructure and is changing forms. And sometimes it's invisible and intangible. So they might be need to redefine infrastructure to use or apply this idea of multi uh, scalar uh, matter to understand or extend its uh, definition. So it giving focus on the infra quality of the system. So sometimes it will uh, on their temporal and the special dimension and the complexity and the com uh, complication attending their open and the relational capacity to the different level and the different scale of structure, for example, architecture or other physical construction. So, okay. A sense of infrastructure, not just a thing, a system or an output, but a complex social and a technical process that enables particular kinds of action in the city. So here, uh, I argue architecture as an infrastructure to re-understand really post-metropolis. And this more recent uh, uh, research used this idea to remapping Hayden Taipei, a study of urban better, to find out this infrastructure actually transform into some house open open system op, so, uh, open organized architecture uh, service uh, under this uh, urban paddock and provide different kind of activity and possibility to public life okay so to conclude infrastructure itself as a set of social material process and expression um, Time has come to approach architecture urban, urbanistically and urbanism architecturally. The diagram between architecture and the infrastructure through the idea of scale provide a reciprocal action which may vividly explore the flowing and complex nature of post metropolis in East Asia context. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Sophia, for your, this is very uh, extensive uh, presentation. <laughs> yeah. but thank you very much. Uh, is there anyone who wants to uh, ask some question to uh, show you one? I think it's uh, quite interesting to me about uh, the that the scale is actually uh, not put in hierarchical, you know, it's it's just it's a mix, and there is just uh, inter interlink it, you know, and that really reminds me on the case in Jakarta in here, it's a mega city, and I remember what what uh, Stephen, you know, Stephen, when when he had a research on Jakarta and. He says that uh, one of the important things is, uh, you know, the use of motorcycle. You know, in, in Indonesia, we, we can have motorcycles so very easily, only, only for a very cheap price, we can have a motorcycle and it's actually the main uh, transport transportation mode for us. And which, uh, uh, do you think in your, uh, in your case studies, uh, the transportation mode matters. Right. Um, as I mentioned in the, uh, what we say, the premise of condition. We, our body have um, 
come from the different kind of technology. So the transportation, of course, for the same one, for the same issue and help to uh, rethink about the scale. The, we have a different kind. I didn't show it on the photo. Actually, we, we, do, we do have a high speed trend, but we also have this kind of, uh, rather than just a um, motorcycle, it's a motor, motor bicycle, a more light way, but we can we speed up, then we work. Oh. So we, we can still change different kind of speed when we explore the city. And sometimes, for example, now we don't have to move, but mm -hmm. actually we, we can have a mobility to communicate with each other. So yeah. this is, uh, I think why uh, the different kind of multi-scalar things is beautiful. We can use it as a conceptual idea to understand different kind of physical facility and also the conceptual between uh, distance and speed. Yeah. Okay. Because so that that really matters. And about your um, about your cases, it's London and uh, Taipei. Taipei, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm wondering if if cultural cultural really matters in their cultural aspects. Oh yeah, um, I didn't expect I was speaking such long. <laughs> <laughs> it's more. Uh, I know there's more detail. Uh, I should explain. Uh, more to understanding the complexity in each area. And um, when I revisit and revisit this multi-scalar method and re-examine it in London shuffle, it's quite different. I found uh, there are different kinds of policies, especially uh, for example, like uh, how, they, how the people uh, manage their rubbish. Okay. That's, I would say it's a, um, it's a policy and also the cultural and the climbing uh, situation differences will have a different way to manage or see the rubbish management process. So if we take the same method in, um, for example, in Japan, in Taiwan or in London, they will collect different kinds of data. Okay. My, my challenge and my diff the difficulty, I cannot collect the data I expected when I take it in shuffle because we don't have this, they don't have this kind of um, 10 minutes uh, social gathering when they manage their rubbish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's another question uh, from Isti Andini. I think I, I let her to just ask directly, please. Okay, um, wait a second. So, okay, so um, if we talk about scale in terms of infrastructure, here in Indonesia, we have a problem that one side might be uh, occupied by numerous type of infrastructure, but um, due to different needs of the users. I mean, some users need different scales of infrastructure. They tend to overlay making some kind of layers. Yes, naik kentang aja rebus. Sudah berarti sudah, sudah snack, snacknya sudah cukup. Where were we? Um, so uh, we have a different types of infrastructure making multi layers of scale. So um, do you think that it is more efficient to have the very same uh, scale of each type of infrastructure in one side, or we just, um, we put the need of the user on our top priorities and it makes we have a different scale of infrastructure in one same site. That would be yeah. more um, effective because we build the city due to um, in, in, in the base of the need of the users. But it is probably more complicated when we talk about how to make them integrated because they have different level of scale. Yeah, 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 I, I understand. And actually I have been asked quite similar question when I doing the postdoc research in Ballet. Yeah, 
Um, I would say for the the project uh, in Taipei and in Stratford, it's more like a testing of this method. But I agree, uh, if we need to do, if we will do the comparison study, we it's good to focus on the um, conventionally the same scale of infrastructure. And then we will see what's actually hidden or uh, some uh, different things subtle and those ideally same scale of infrastructure. So that's, uh, I think there's a further research I can do use this, this methodology to apply. For example, like uh, this urban VATIC and uh, flyover, probably different kind of, for example, in American, probably they do have another similar things will happen in this, this kind of transportation infrastructure. But Taipei, especially in Taipei, we're a very high density place. So we will have a different kind of skill activities will happen or might be happen there. So yes, yes, I believe so. If it's more, if I would say more uh, precise, if we focus on uh, one particular skill of infrastructure, but that's more uh, importantly is to know what's the really nature of this uh, infrastructure because they can be transferred or understand as a social infrastructure rather than just a physical infrastructure itself. But uh, so it's also led to the way of understanding the informality or informal economic or informal activity to understanding or use this kind of uh, planted or decided infrastructure for the people. Yeah, and I think it, especially in East Asia city having this more uh, vivid uh, uh, process or evidence can fight in our city. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, thumbs up. <laughs> Is there anyone else who want to ask? Because this is a, such a very complex topic. Interesting, but very complex. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I know. <laughs> and sometimes uh, in the informal yeah. setting, we have, different, uh, we have different kind of activities, even though it's this very same scale. I mean, we're talking about the community scale, but um, if two communities were, um, they are inhabitants of one relatively close sites, they use one same public uh, infrastructure. It, it is possible, very much possible for them to have two different needs because of they have two different communities. And being informal, it makes, um, um, it makes the, the rule of the game in using the public infrastructure is a bit not rigid, it's a bit fluid. I mean, it can change over time and over different people and different get generations. So um, sometimes I think that the concept of ideal having the very same scale for different kind of infrastructure, for different kind of public services in one site, it's a bit um, utopian. I mean, at all, I think there are cases that we're working with lots of different scales even with the very limited spaces in, uh, in our urban area. So uh, having the very same scale, um, I probably need to think about um, how to make uh, the generalization of the needs, the generalization of public using, um, public use of the, of the site. I mean, uh, there are so many things to, to, uh, to try to, to generalize them because it's not something yeah. that you can make the very same scale for everyone like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, it can be, we can discuss in two aspects. Uh, the first one is uh, the, for the designer, the planner or designer. We need to understand what kind of size and what kind of scale we deal with. And those are really practical things. So um, for, the for the architect, so I didn't, 
uh, deny we still need this kind of physical skill uh, as a measurement. But uh, I think this, uh, rather than the physical uh, or the definition of uh, real size of, or real scale of things for a public work or the individual work, I would say if we take from a uh, conceptual idea to think about, they might be a different kind of skill to understand architecture. For example, like architecture as infrastructure. So when we build a, for example, a public library, it's a architecture work for sure. But if we think it's an infrastructure, it's a social infrastructure, they will probably change when we decide that or we invited different kind of program itself or it's a public space because we take it, it's not just architect itself, it's the infrastructure. So I think that will bring out more um, possibility or alternative to rethink about the architecture itself and its relationship with the, uh, our, no matter in the city or in the village, I would say the more public life. So it's from the two, I, I think the two aspects to, to use or think about this idea, yeah. And yeah, I, I believe so, it's a utopia. Uh, no, uh, we cannot define uh, because it's a dynamic. Everyone aim the different kind of skill, but then not most of people or even for the architect, we take it for granted. So I think it's a quite a purpose for uh, this method to let us uh, be awareness of what we are dealing with and what kind of tool as a professional, uh, practitioner or the scholar we can use to understanding the situation or provide a new possibility to the public. Yeah. Okay. Is there any follow up? Because <laughs> uh, uh... Christy Andini is my friend and I think she, she works a lot about the infrastructure, especially at the, uh, you know, the boundary between, between territorial, between territories. Yeah, well, mine is on rural area, so we have a quite different resource of space. Mine is quite unlimited spaces yeah. because it's rural. We have lots of public spaces. But there are lots of uh, interesting fund, uh, funding, right? <laughs> Especially in terms of uh, skills, I think. Okay, uh, is there anyone else? Want to ask some questions? Okay. If there's uh, nobody else to ask some question, then uh, I think we're we almost past the time. You know? <laughs> 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 didn't expect it to be this long, but, but thank you very much, Sophia, yeah. for the, the very extensive presentation. I think, and uh, I hope we can uh, follow up with some, you know, with some more activities later. Um, thank you very much for this very interesting uh, presentation. And this is actually uh, quite foreign to us about the, uh, your topic is quite foreign to us. So uh, what I want uh, the audience to know is that to, to give them more insight. Uh, so yeah. This yeah, actually but, yeah. it's not, it's, it's also foreign from my, uh, uh, my, uh country you i mean the this idea things in <laughs> our dip, yeah, discipline because um but uh i think it's quite a good things to think of rethink about the scale the yeah. idea of scale because we in architecture background or the urban planning we take them for granted for too long and as i show you we even don't have the current publication about or talk about or challenge about the idea of scale we just yeah. use it, but we don't theorize it. Yeah. But you will see the geographer or the scholar in urban yeah, study or that's even why I'm they, very they take our your presentation. 
it's yeah. not every day that you have architect talking about infrastructure <laughs> in a regional scale. Yeah. Even we, urban planner, I'm a regional planner. It's not easy for me to find architect talking about Fire. infrastructure. Yes. You don't fall. <laughs> Sorry, my Fire. boy. You, <laughs> it's not every day meeting, meeting someone like you. So uh, through all this presentation, uh, it gives me a, a different perspective on how architects are actually trying to understand what we regional planner trying to say for such a long time about the scale and how they uh, kind of, uh, we use scales as guidance, right? Yeah. To, to form the structure of a region. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's a new thing for me as a regional planner, having architect talking to me, I mean, <laughs> discussing to me as a regional planner, in terms of infrastructure scale, in regional scale, I mean. <laughs> so thank you so much having this new, whole new perspective. Yeah, architects are just crazy group of people. And we talk about the infrastructure and on the other hand, we still draw a shape or design a spoon to argue it's a proportion, the scale is not really good. <laughs> it's a crazy guys. Yeah, so. I think that that's really good to talk about uh, the skill from a different discipline or different kind of professions. And I think it's quite important to, I haven't got there, but I try to theorize uh, the importance or significance of skill in architecture again, and how to set out the manifesto or the issue in our generation, yeah. Okay. That's very interesting. And I'm, I, I'm really happy that, uh, you know, uh, this, this talk will uh, already, you know, open new perspective <laughs> to some people. Yeah. <laughs> so the goal, yeah, I, I can reach my goal. <laughs> Thank you very much again. Thank you. And on behalf of the Department of Architecture, I say, I really say thank you for your uh, willingness to share with us. And also, I thank you so much for uh, all the audience for your particip participation today. And I hope that we can uh, meet again in another occasion. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you and welcome to drop me some message if you have a something want to discuss further or have an yeah. interesting part of it. Thank you. Just drop me a message with my email. Thank okay, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.